please a big round of applause to Gabriel Cardoza, please. Oh my God, thanks for staying all the way to the end. <laughs> I know it was hard, but hopefully the food and alcohol helped. All right, <laughs> how do you envision the future of tech? I got this question, um, I got to choose last, and I was like, this is a really hard question to answer in five minutes. So I was like, how can I make this possible? I decided to do, how can I envision the future of tech specifically for Latinx folks? And I am a digital media planner for Truly Interactive, which is a political consulting firm in Berkeley, which means I work in politics um, on the progressive side. <laughs> And how I envision the future of tech is in two parts. The first part is obviously more Latinos in tech, especially just, not just white Latinos, because that's a big problem. <laughs> is that you'll see like, oh, look at all of our Latinos that we have in tech, and it's just a bunch of like telenovela Latinos that they don't look like, people don't look like that. Um, we need to have more Afro Latinos in tech. We need more disabled Latinos in tech. LGBTQ Latinos in tech. Indigenous Latinos in tech. Latinas and trans Latinx Latinos in tech, femme identifying Latinos in tech. So all of those subgroups need to be in the tech. So it's not just Latinxes in general. We have to be aware that there's different subgroups of us and we have to make sure there's equal amounts of all of us, because there's we're not winning if there's more white Latinos or if there's more straight Latinos. Like that needs to be an equal amount of everybody. Um, the second part is lifting up those more marginalized communities in our own communities. So as we've heard from other speakers here, is making sure that if you can lift up another LGBTQ Latino, helping them, mentoring them. Maybe mentoring a Latina. If you're a Latino yourself, maybe you go and mentor, mentor a female identifying Latina to make sure to help them up because we have marginalized groups even in our own community. So it's our job to help them out. The third one also is in this same pillar, I'm not done with the first one, is to make sure that we educate our community. So many, when I first started in tech, I graduated from school from graphic design. And then after I was a graphic designer, I went to a art school again for business management and ended up working in an advertising firm, still doing creative, really wanting to get into tech, but no one would let me because they were like, oh, you didn't go to programming school or you didn't, you're not good at math or you're just, you're just better on the creative side. That's just what will put you in. And of course, being a Nicaraguense and just being used to being pushed into small spaces and telling people I can't do things means I can. I was like, no, I can do it. And I like forced my bosses to sit and talk to me and I talked their ear off and I said, I'm gonna annoy you until you give me a space to let me sit here. And it's worked for me so far and I still do it. <laughs> and so just keep pushing, keep pushing. Don't take no for an answer. Most of the time when people say no the first time, they break like the 100th and 15th time. So like keep asking. <laughs> also, please make sure that when you are hiring Latinos or if you are in that space where you are the senior management and you're hiring, don't just look for the same traditional Latinx person to hire. Don't just look for the same, though I do appreciate everyone here that went to school for computer programming and went to school for um, business, that's great, but there's so many of us that we didn't know that that was an opportunity for us. I didn't know what computer science was even an opportunity for me when I went to school. My parents didn't go to college here, they didn't really speak English, and we didn't apply for financial aid because they were undocumented at the time and they thought that it would give their spot up and no one told me that, so I went to school and paid for it and everything, and no one told me that, so I was like, oh, well, then I'm just gonna go to school for something that's safe and what I know of, and it's graphic design, and then from that point on, I had other Latinx folks telling me that, like, no, you can't do this, this is an opportunity, and from there, I got into politics, which is my last part of how I envision the future of tech, which is that this is a space that's not diverse. Politics and Latinx, is, there's not very many of us. And it's funny because we are basically the largest voting group now in the United States with the most voting power. Um, and yet there's none of us there. 
And there are all of these white consultants sitting at a table trying to figure out how they can reach Latinxes across the United States, but none of the people at the table are Latinx. None of the people at the table that are senior positions are Latinx. Most of the people can't even speak Spanish, and they're trying to target Spanish-speaking Latinos. It's ridiculous. So how do I envision the future of tech is that I see us moving beyond just Silicon Valley. I see us moving into government spaces, moving into organizations, moving beyond the nonprofit because sometimes we get stuck in nonprofits and jobs that aren't paying us well. No, you need to get still get paid well. So moving into those government spaces, moving into political offices, moving to work for the people who are running so that you can change things from the inside out so that you can have a seat at the table. So you know, no one knows how to speak to our community better than us. No one knows how to reach to our community better than us. So this is how I envision the future of tech, is us helping us get ahead, not just financially, into a world of computers and Silicon Valley and social media, which I love very much because I use it and it pays my job, <laughs> but also to help us help with all of these things to help run, to pass props so that it could help with housing, to help get people elected who look like you, to help that one day I can be in a government office and be surrounded with all these faces that look like me. The first thing I did when I stepped into this room and I saw all these people, I was like, oh my God, this is what it feels like to just have everyone in the room look exactly like you and know what it feels like to be you. And that's not a space that we can come to a lot. And that's what I envision the future of tech, is that a space like this is always there.